Good morning, beloveds. Sorry, being distracted by the cats. I got Gabby on one side of me and Foster on the other. So, all right. Um, it is November 11th. It is actually Veterans Day. We celebrated Veterans Day yesterday, but today is actually Veterans Day. So, uh, happy Veterans Day. Celebrate the veteran in your life. I have bunches of them in mind, so. All right, it is November 11th. Our title is What is Supply? Our author is Josephine Holmes Curtis, and this is from How to Get the Most Out of Life from 1937. I have to look into that, because I believe that's um, Ernest's niece. All right. Limitation in experience indicates a limited outlook or belief. Lack indicates a lack of faith, and there is no other reason why any person is lacking in supply. It is not a matter of the station of life to which we are born, the experience through which we have passed, nor the pressure of lack which may endure in the world about us today. All of these facts are true, and they are effective and do prevail in our experience, but they are effects. They are false gods which we have worshipped and feared. All effects will and must change as we change the cause or belief behind them. In changing our belief, we are not deserting intelligence or trying to believe anything that is not true. When we try to grow, to improve, or expand along any line, we prepare for the development by study, by practice, until finally we have mastered the principles underlying the desired achievement. We prepare in every way for the new and expected experience, which is not ours now, but towards which we aspire. We do not sit in resignation, concluding that the present status is unchangeable. If we wish to prosperity, abundance, we must prepare for it, rather than preparing for continued limitation. We must train and discipline our thoughts to see behind each and every effect to cause, to see the cause which produced and is sustaining that particular belief, and to see beyond that cause to first cause or God, the limitless and perfect principle of life which can and will render unto any person the good they can conceive and accomplish in a perfectly logical and orderly way projecting into the person's experience through the avenues of thought and belief the good for which they have prepared wow could we be any more academic I'm also having a look. It's dark. It's it's completely overcast out here. And this, as light as, bri as bright as this light is. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, that was very academic. <laughs> it was very academic. Um, but, and I'm going to give you a real world, real world example. I work in a small mom and pop. I say mom and pop. It's actually a mother and son now, but it was a mom and pop. And the mom is in her 80s and her she grew up in a situation where she had to go to work at 14 to help support the family. Uh, the father was not providing. So she grew up in that lack. And to this day, even though she owns her own home, uh, she owns her own She's not allowed to drive anymore, but um, she owns her own vehicle. She has a business that she has had for more than 30 years, and it is a successful business. We are paying our bills. She is paying her employees. She still worries about money. She still worries. Like, we had kind of a quiet week, but still, when I looked at the week, it's still a pretty good week. Um, 
and we still have one more day of the week. So, you know, we're, we're going to meet the minimum that we need to make sure our bills are covered. And she still, you know, because I heard her say it yesterday. Well, you know, and it was because I was working, I, there was a project I was working on where I was doing customer returns. And she says, look at all that money in that basket. You know, money's so tight right now. And I'm like, no, money hasn't been tight in almost a year now. And yet, and she worries about payroll and she worries and we're understaffed and she's worrying about payroll. And I'm just like, you know, she's doing really well, you know, her bills are being paid, you know, and, and there's enough left over to invest in the business to grow the business. And she's, she's still worried about, you know, all the money in the basket with the customer returns, how tight the money is, how she's worried about payroll with us being understaffed. And I'm like, you have two people who are working tomorrow out of all of the people that could be working and you are understaffed and you are worried about payroll. That's what Josephine is talking about. She's fine. She's, she's doing really well. Um, like I'm not worried about my job. I'm not worried that we are going to close up shop any minute now and I'm going to have to go find another job. We're doing well, you know, could we do, could we be doing better? Yes, probably. But you know, so <laughs> just like this is her attitude. And I'm just like, so that's what Josephine is talking about. What is the belief, the belief from her having to get a job at 14 years old to help support the family is still running her life 60 something years later. You know, almost 70 years later that, that it's still, and that I'm sure that that thing is, that belief is buried so deeply. She's not even aware of it. I don't know that she hears herself when she says that. And she has had, she has made comments like that to other employees and they have quit their job because they're afraid that the job won't be there. And I'm like, so she's creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and I mean, dear, dear, I would love to point it out to her, but she's not receptive to it. She's not willing to change. So that's what Ernest, that, that's what Josephine is talking about. We have these beliefs deep, buried so deeply in our subconscious. We're not even aware of them. Yet, if we paid attention to the things that we said, we would probably go, oh, well, where did that thought come from? You know, and let, let me go back and work it on that thought. I mean, I can give you one of my own examples. Um, I've watched my mother have her weight struggles her entire life. And guess what? I have weight struggles. So, um, so there's this, but, and, and it's not just in, in, in my case, it's not just my mother. It's, it's, it's a cultural society, you know, believe that when women go through menopause, they gain weight. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's so, you know how I talk about peeling back the layers? That's one of them. So what she's saying is if we have an attitude of lack, then what we need to do is get in there, dig out that belief and change it and change it. And maybe we don't have to change the belief so much as I, I'm going to give you the clear water example. It's like if you have a glass, if, if you have a glass of dirty water, um, like a pond or something, every clear drop you put in there gradually will eventually the, the silt will clear. And so she says you work at it deliberately. So you got to keep putting that clear drop of water in there. What is it? You know, what, it, what, what, my, what could well, one with, with the example of the, the money, it's like, let, let's, let's not, the, what is supply? <laughs> In the end, it all goes back to God. Now, there are absolute real world examples where people are not paying living wages. Okay. Now let's, if we want to deal with that, well, how can they get away with not paying living wages? Well, because 
at a cultural level, at a societal level, we have decided. And so how do we change that? By changing our minds. By changing our minds. By acknowledging that there is enough to go around and that we can share what is going on. You know, we can share the resources. We can also take prosperity and disconnect it from money. Money's only a small part of prosperity. So, so it's like for every clear drop we drop into our subconscious, it can help clear whatever it is that is down in there that is keeping us in the lack. And we do it on a personal level and we do it on a cultural level and we do it on a societal level and we do it on, so, you know, until everybody is on the same page going, our supply is ultimately God. And we're, ch it's, and we work on our attitude. So, um, th so there, there's, there we go. I, mm. Okay. So when we try and grow, when we try to grow to improve or expand along the line, we prepare for the development by study, by practice. And finally, we have mastered the principles underlying the desired achievement. We prepare in every way for the new and expected experience. We prepare in every way for the new and expected experience. So two keys out of that sentence. We prepare for and we expect. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to prepare in every way for the expected experience. Do what you need to do to master it and practice daily. Try on the new attitude. Keep dropping those clear drops until you clear whatever it is that is keeping you in that lack mentality. In whatever Surprise. it is that we, um, you know, we, we work on it at a personal level and gradually ease up to the, the, the big levels. All right. That's the mission. The other mission is the same mission I give you every day, which is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. It is the spiritual practice of self-care. We cannot pour from an empty cup, especially if we are going to prepare to change our mindsets. All right. Sit down and be compassionate with yourself. Be uh, kind with yourself. Be loving with yourself. If you, especially if you're working from a lack mentality, it's like, all right, what do you need to do to take care of this attitude? So, all right. Uh, yeah. It, practicing love kindness. There's a whole bunch of ways to do it. I just gen generally give you a couple of jumping off points. Take a deep breath before you speak, especially to yourself. You will never speak to yourself more than you will speak to anybody else. You might as well make everything you say to yourself loving, kind, and compassionate. Even when you're saying the hard stuff to yourself, even when you're holding your feet to the fire, you can still do it lovingly, kindly, and compassionately. And I can I can promise you that it'll probably work a little bit better. Um, take a walk, take a nap, take a break. Uh, the human version of turning yourself off and turning yourself back on again. Um, celebrate the good stuff. No. Is that what I mean? Yeah. Don't save the good stuff. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I, what I like to say is eat dessert first, but what I'm saying is don't save the good stuff. Uh, another way to say it that I've realized recently is to go out of your way to make the ordinary extraordinary a little more often. Wear the fancy clothes. Use the fancy dishware. Don't save them just for holidays. Do it on a random Tuesday or a random Thursday. I don't know what I have about Tuesdays. <laughs> So, um, you know, go out of your way. And then it, while you're practicing this love, kindness, and compassion, I want to remind you that joy is a quality of God. No matter what is going on in the world, you deserve joy. So please make room for joy in your life. All right. <sighs> the rest of the suggestions, basic self-care, do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like for you today. Uh, we finally found out where all the squirrels were hiding and they were all jumping up and down uh, in the trees and were not interested in us at all. It was great. Uh, but at least we know where they are. So, cause I was worried about the number of squirrels in the park. It was, it, it was getting downright. Um, drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. You saw my glass of water. 
So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Your brain works better when your body works better and your um, skin looks better when you are well hydrated. Yes, I will appeal to your vanity to get you to drink plenty of water. Um, uh, and then oh, um, I, I would tell you to get plenty of bright light and yet it is just absolutely dreary out there. So I'm kind of leaning into the bright light, artificial bright light. No, no, you leave, no. You leave that heating pad covered. Sorry, I was talking to the cat. Um, and then open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us. It's all, all the time. What Josephine was talking about was a mindset. What Ernest is talking about in that quote is a mindset. What Emma is always talking about, it's a mindset. It's a state of consciousness. Once we learn that heaven is not a place we have to get to, but a state of mind, a state of, 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 of consciousness, then we realize that heaven can be any place we are. And it goes from, you know, a, a state of grace to a bless, to, to a superpower, you know, absolutely. So sugar, oh, there's a dress hanging on the door and she was about to literally, she didn't know. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. So where was I? Oh yeah. And when I say create that mindset, open the windows of your soul, best advice I can give you is listen to Emma Curtis Hopkins. One, she's phenomenal and everything she says is pretty amazing. But two, the, the, the best quote, look for the good and praise it, which you hear is count your blessings. One of the things, what Josephine was talking about today, one of the ways that you can do that is to look at all of the good that is in your life. We have a tendency to focus on the negative and yet there is so much that is positive in our lives all the time anyway, that if we would focus on that, one, we would feel better. <laughs> I mean, science says that when you focus on the good, you'll see that you have so much more. You can also, you'll also find opportunities for it to grow. You can find opportunities where you can expand the good in your life. All right. So that is the, that is my good word. And I am going to go from there. And I guess I'm at the social media part. I'm going to remind you we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I encourage you to check all that out. There's hours of content and we try and be, keep it light, bright, funny, and helpful. Um, yes, I, I have a sense of humor, so I definitely will post things that are funny as well as helpful. Uh, and if you want to know what's going on with the center, including the fact that we have a show tonight, um, email info at creativelife.org. That will get you on the constant contact. Okay. So I'm at the part where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a Focus on what you need to day, a get some bright light day, a dance in the rain day, a bundle up day, a one drop at a time day, a recognize your good day, a count your blessings day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You're a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. Or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you're a godling. All right? Know the truth of your being. Explore the truth of your being. Peel back the layers of who you have been told you are. By society, by culture, by religion, by all of that nonsense. And get to know who God knows you to be. Because I can promise you that that person is really good and pretty cool. All right? Okay. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.